Is cannabis efficient for pain management after a spinal cord injury? Let's talk about it. My name is Ahmed and I want to start a new series on here called Cannabis in Depth. In the videos in this series, we will discuss a variety of chronic pain, chronic illness, and injuries and see the correlation between cannabis and that to see if cannabis can improve the quality of life, improve pain management, or even just replace pain management from opiate pills. Let's talk about spinal cord injuries. Spinal cord injury is chronic pain and it cannot be cured. Spinal cord injury, or how I'll be referring to it for the rest of this video, is SCI. is a result of damage to the spinal cord or the nerves at the end of the spinal canal. Your spinal cord runs like this on your back. Now, there's always going to be a cause and effect to anything in life. It's almost applicable to every single thing you know. The common causes to get an effect like SCI are very sudden and they don't really develop over time, unless it's an infection. Some common causes for SCI are sport injuries, driving accidents, violence such as gunshots or stabbing, traumatic falls, or like I said, an infection that can create an abscess on your spinal cord. Symptoms may include partial or complete loss of sensory in your limbs or motor function of your limbs. Basically, either you can't feel or you become paralyzed. And this can affect your legs, arm, or your whole body, or all three. Now that we have our background on SCI, let's talk about cannabis and what it can do for SCI patients. I will leave a link in the description as to where I source my information. Today we're going to look at a study published on the National Library of Medicine.gov. This study took place in New Zealand. Such a beautiful place, but cannabis is not widely available there. The methods of which this study was conducted was through semi-structured interviews with SCI patients that have reportedly used cannabis for their treatment. Before I continue, I would like to add that SCI SCI patients go through secondary sets of symptoms due to SCI. However, I will only focus on the paralysis and the pain that is associated with SCI. This study was structured in six different themes, and we're going to go through each theme briefly. Theme 1, the prison of pain. Living with paralysis is hard, as is living with any other chronic pain or illness. The common SCI patient goes through a lot of pain, and they are often trapped by this pain. It makes it really hard to take part in social interactions with family and friends, because it's not what it used to be. All other activities in daily life become shadowed over pain, hence the person of pain. In the study, participants' responses were recorded. Participant 6 said, It just takes over your, your life. I mean, when you have the pain, you can't do anything, you know. You can barely talk, up, and up. It just, the pain just overtakes everything. If you're not someone living with chronic pain or illness, consider yourself lucky. You remember that last time you stubbed your toe and it really hurt and nothing else mattered no matter what you were doing or where you were going? You just couldn't stop focusing on that pain? Yeah, it's tough. 10,000 times tough. Theme 2 touches on the prescribed drugs not working as they should. And if they do work, it comes with a series of side effects. These participants described many attempts at reducing their pain through prescribed medications, but oftentimes they were ineffective or they came with detrimental side effects. Or both. Amongst all these side effects, the top three most commonly reported side effects of this medication were constipation, drowsiness, and fatigue. These three side effects alone can make you feel like you are in a zombie-like state. And this is on accordance of several participants referring to the medications as such. Here's what participant 4 has to say about this. It dulls the pain, but then I'm sleepy, and um, yeah, just dozy and feel a bit like a zombie. I don't know, and I don't really like that. It's not the way I want to live, really. It must be tough. When you're going through this amount of pain, you will do anything to get rid of that pain. So you resort to the prescription medications that your doctor prescribed you, but then it comes with these detrimental side effects that just makes it unenjoyable. Yes, the pain is gone, but now you got these other things to worry about. Theme three is choosing to use cannabis. The discovery of how these patients found cannabis or decided to use cannabis. Participants reported using cannabis due to the fact that their prescription medication was ineffective and or the side effects were just really frustrating and exhausting, and I don't blame them. One of the participants decided to use a ratio where CBD is up here and THC content is down here. That participant is participant 5, and that participant reflected on it talking, There's some high CBD cannabis out there that will relax your body, which is the one that helps me relax my mind. Get out of that state of pain. 
or there's that one that makes you go to sleep, which is high THC content. Those are the two simple breeds, really. I'm fortunate sometimes to get one that makes me live through the day and not sleep through the day. We know cannabis and its contents can help treat multiple different issues such as depression, anxiety, insomnia, arthritis, dementia, eating disorders, pain, cancer, and much, much more. So when these patients started to use cannabis for pain management as opposed to the regularly prescribed medications, of course they were going to experience a whole world of shock when they realized that they can have all these benefits without these crazy side effects. Theme 4. Negotiating an unfamiliar illegal context. In simpler terms, I believe this theme title is talking about the justifications of using what's considered illegal as medication as opposed to what is legal. In New Zealand, there are actually only a few cannabis products which are legal, and the participants are aware of that. However, only one participant throughout the study was using legal cannabis. Most of the other participants considered that the legal-based cannabis products were unaffordable. They also perceived access to it to be limited due to the high level of bureaucracy and administrative processes. Participant 3 reflected, Well, it's been a fortune to go back to your doctor, but I can grow something out in my backyard that would do the same thing for me. Why go to a doctor when all they're going to do is refer you on and then it's going to be eight months down the road track before you know? Overlooking the study, I can see what Participant 3 is talking about. He's been through the doctors and he got the medication. However, it came with those detrimental side effects and it didn't really give a good effect for him. So when he tries cannabis and he finds his solution, why go back to a doctor? You have your solution right here. You can grow it. You can consume it. You feel good. At the end of the day, I think this is what it's about. It's a plant, it's a medication, and the education should be shared through the masses. This plant can do wonders for you, much as pharmaceuticals can, but without the detrimental side effects. Theme five, three to pursue meaningful outcomes. Do you remember theme one, prison of pain? That's exactly what's talked about in theme five. How these participants discovered cannabis and they felt as if they were freed from the prison of pain. They felt liberated. And once they started using cannabis, they didn't go back. Why would you want to go back to all those detrimental side effects? They concluded in their own experience that cannabis was a way more effective pain management strategy than these drugs. Participant 2 recalls, It's helped my whole health and helped the pain and everything. My mental pain, my physical pain, the whole lot, you know, ever since I've been on it. And that's brilliant. It's just so unfortunate that we don't have enough of these studies out there that's going to give doctors the liberty to push cannabis for effective pain management to these SCI patients. It could be a whole world of wonders, but you wouldn't know because your doctor wouldn't recommend it. Nine times out of ten, we all follow our doctor's recommendations. Thankfully, legalization is right around the corner. We'll talk about that later. Theme six, you cannot always get what you want. I feel like this theme can apply more so to New Zealand and this study rather than if it were done here in America. Participants in the study repeatedly described the unpredictability, inconsistency, and lack of information surrounding a product of cannabis in the market. Confusion surrounded the participants' understanding of the cannabinoid composition of cannabis use. Without proper information, participants were really confused on how cannabis was going to interact with the prescribed medications. With cannabis being almost unreachable to most of the participants, even when they chose cannabis as their pain management, it was hard for them to have a regular and consistent supply of cannabis. Participant 3 says, If you're not going to grow it yourself, you're then therefore left to buy it. Now when you buy it, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know what strain it is. You don't know what product it is. I've had instances where I've bought the right product. Where's, where's the fairness in that? Now, ideally, I think what this participant is saying is, in the perfect world, if cannabis was legal and there was marketplace everywhere, and a patient wanted to go in and treat something using a specific strain of cannabis, it would be lovely if they could do that. Unfortunately, that's not the case in most countries. It's not even the case in most states. For the participants in the study, cannabis was broadly positive and a useful intervention for managing pain. In addition to the study, there was a survey done in Denmark where 59% of individuals with SCI reported that cannabis had positive effects for them. In addition to that survey, there was a survey done in Colorado where 59% of users also reported the same positive effects. My personal take on this is pretty simple. If I'm someone living with SCI and my life is greatly affected by it, and my only way of pain management is taking pharmaceuticals that can give me a numerous amount of side effects, I'd be happy that the pain was gone. But I would not be happy with what I'm left with in terms of side effects. I myself am a medicinal cannabis user and a great, great big advocate for it. If I were living with SCI, 
I'd probably have to at least give cannabis a shot due to the fact that there's numerous individuals living with SCI that report great positive effects from it. This is just my personal take and I by no means necessary am speaking for people living with SCI. I have no experience with SCI. This is merely my opinion. My own what if, if you will. If you know someone living with SCI, you should send them this video if they are looking for alternative ways to treat their pain. If you found this video insightful and educational, please leave a like, comment what I can improve on, what you guys want to see more, what other topics to talk about in depth. Share this information to those who could really need it. Also, I do have my podcast on here, so if you want to check that out, it's the Candle of Podcast. I got three episodes out right now, and we'll see you guys next time.